Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to create a high score list that persists uh, during uh, and between uh, gameplay sessions. So the idea here, let me show you what I've got, is on intro screen we are going to have a high score list, so you can see that we have the, the top 5 high scores that users have achieved in the game, and when you play, let me see if I can get a different high score that's still the bug that we still have it so i'll eventually get to it okay so let me see i only have two lives because i'm testing and it's easier okay six one eight hundred six eighty yeah okay so maybe i can just die now and you can see that okay i have a new high score so when the player loses he goes to the screen and if he has a new high score we give the player the chance to change the initials i don't know B A E whatever <laughs> not B. Uh, R T G whatever, and you can see that it has uh, seven hundred points. Enter any key to start. I need to change that as well. But and now you can see that we are here on B T G is on second, and all the other ones were um, pushed uh, to the bottom. So now. This was on second and third, now are on third and fourth, and so forth. And so the idea here is that we have this high score list, and that does not only exist when we are playing the game, when we start the game and we finish the game, it's not only updating the data while we are playing the game, but also if we shut down the game and open the game again, we still have our high score list. And let me show you how to implement this. So the first thing that we need to do is to add a new kind of attributes. And so far we've been dealing with these attributes right here. And these attributes are specific to the actors and to the scenes. Uh, so, but if we, which means that if we want to have uh, an attribute that persists also uh, through different scenes because now we have different scenes we have the intro we have the the main scene and we are going to uh, create an end scene and what we want is that for example the score that we have in the player in the main scene we want to get that value the value of the score also on the end scene and since we were using a, a score attribute the scene the, the that score value and that attribute only exists on this scene so when we want to create attributes that persist also uh, through scenes, we need to create game attributes. So you can see that we have this other type of attributes. And these are attributes that are, um, um, that belong to the entire game. They don't belong to a, a single scene. And so we can access these attributes anywhere on the game. And we have two ways to create these attributes. So we have here create new game attribute, or it's also here on the settings attributes so if if you press here show game attributes it's going to open the settings and attributes list and you see that i have three types of attributes but uh so uh, right now i'm going to talk about the score so since i want the score to since i want to access the score also on the end scene i needed to create a game attribute called score and replace the score that i was using which was a, like let's call it a normal attribute by this uh, this new one so i created uh, the score attribute now you can see that we have here uh, the getters and the setters just like we have on the attributes and what i did was uh, on the the block that i had before to increment the score in, uh, instead of using the score value the attribute now i'm using the game attribute and you can see that i also implemented a new value a new block sorry a new block before we had the increment score and now i added a new one which is set score and this is because uh, i needed a way to not only increment the score but also to set the value of the score and initially only with the increment i could only add values to the score and not set a specific value so i basically create this new one set score and i copied all the code that was before uh, to this uh, to this block and you can see that uh, on this block now I set the, the score value to score. So I set the score game attribute to the value that, to the parameter that is coming from here from the block. And then I do everything else as I had before. The only difference is that instead of using the score attribute that we had before, I'm using the game attribute. And basically the increment score, which was the block that we had before, I just change it to call 
the fed score value and when i pass the value i just increment the score game attribute here so this is not uh, incrementing the actual value i'm just like uh, adding the two values and then that value is set on the set score and this all this is because at the beginning of the game why is it not here uh, sorry <laughs> now i oh i should have something here but it's not maybe it's here no, not here. Uh, sorry, now I'm trying to... It's on the intro. Probably. No, I'm not doing it. Oh, I don't know why. Okay, so I need to do... I need to change this. I don't remember. And sorry, uh, now I was just like, okay. Uh, I just lost myself. Uh, because the problem here is that... So these game attributes, uh, they persist through themes and they also persist through, uh, through gameplay sessions. For them to persist through gameplay sessions, we need to save those values. And you have here on the game section, the saving, you can see that we can save the game and load the save file. And this is basically what is, this is doing, is saving all the game attributes to a save file, and then we can load all the game attributes again from that save file. And what happens here is that we cannot decide which attributes to store between gameplay sessions and which ones we don't want to store. Because, for example, the score, the player score, it's not an attribute that I want to store between gameplay sessions. I just want to keep that value between uh, things in our game. But when the, the gameplay ends, when the game is closed, I don't want to store the value because when we came back to the game, I want the, the score value to be at, at zero, to start again from the beginning. But Stencil does not give us that option. So all the game attributes are saved and all the get game attributes are loaded. So you cannot uh, choose specifically what you want to save or, or what you want to load. So the, what you always need to do... Oh, it's here. Set score value to zero. <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was looking for this. So this means that, for example, at the end of the game, when we finish the game and I'm saving the game attributes to keep my high score list, I'm also saving the score value. So every time we start the game, we need to reset the score value because we are loading the last one that we used. So, and that's why I create the set score because then I can, I can use the block. So where is it? I can use the block set score value to, and I'm using it here. So set score value to zero. And this is basically calling this uh, block and setting the game attribute back to zero. So we, are, we need to remember to do this when we are loading the new, when you are loading the game attribute that we didn't want to save. And so that's why I created this set score. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking for this, but I was looking for a, a block with a, like this purple color and I couldn't find it. So yeah, this is the block that I was looking for. So remember that you can save game, all game attributes are safe, even if you want it or not. Uh, and the, the ones that you, you didn't want to save, you need to reset the value when you start the game. So that, this is it. And so I changed this. So now the, the score is not being saved on a score attribute, but on the score game attribute in a way that we can access that score on the end screen that we are going to be creating. But before that, before going into that, uh, let's go to the intro screen and see how I created the high score list. And basically, on the intro screen, intro scene, uh, yeah, on the intro scene, what I have, you can see here in the events. And what I'm doing here is that when the game starts, when the game starts, I'm going to load the save file. So I have the, so I have the data that is saved, and so I can show the high score list. And to keep the high score list, to save the high score list on the on the device, uh, I created two. Oh, it's not here. I created two game attributes, two different game attributes. And let me show you. So besides the score, I have a high score and the users. And these are both lists of files, uh, lists of values. Sorry. And the high score is a list of all the values of the of the uh, top five values. And the users, is, it is the list of the initials of the five top users. 
So I don't, I didn't have a way to store all this together. Like, okay, this user has this name and is using it as this value. So I didn't have a way to do this. We can store, we can create game attributes uh, of type map. And basically a map is a key value pair. So you can store like pairs of data. And I could store like, okay, uh, the key would be the initial of the player and the value would be the, the value of the score. But uh, the problem with maps is that they don't have uh, an order, like a list have. A list has an order. I mean, each uh, item has an index, and it's all ordered inside the list. But a map does not have an order, so it would be difficult for me to... Not, not difficult, it would be more difficult to get the values in order. I would have to get the entire map and then order the values before showing them. So I prefer to use two lists. And then I know that the first value of the high score corresponds to the first value of the user. And that's the way I'm doing it. So I have these two game attributes. And what I'm doing when the game starts, so you can see on the intro scene uh, on the event created, what I'm doing is that I'm loading the save file. I'm loading the, the data that we have. And you see that this is a block. So this basically runs, loads the save file and Inside, you have access to that data. You don't have access to the data right before, right after the block, but inside. So it may take a while to load the save file. That's why you need to use the block and get the code inside to use that um, that data. And what I'm doing here is that I'm I'm seeing if the high score has uh, items or not, because the first time that we are going to to run the game the lists will be empty because we don't have any saved data. So what I'm doing here is that I try to load the save file. I see if the high score, for example, contains items. And if the high score doesn't have any items, it means that it is the first time that we are running the game. So I create, I initialize both lists. So basically what I'm doing, I'm initializing the list for the high scores. I'm initializing the list for the users. And then I'm repeating five times and inserting like default data to each one of the lists. So I'm inserting like zeros to the high scores and uh, AAA to the user initials. And at the end of this, I just save the data. So I'm doing this because, uh, so that every time that I start the game and I, in a, if I still don't have data, I, I don't need to be constantly recreating and initializing the list and everything. So the first time I see, okay, well, I have no data. I'm just going to create the default data that I need. I'm going to save it. And the next time that I start the game and load the save file, the high score will have items. And so I'm not doing anything else. And I have all the default data that I need. And so this is what I'm doing to load the data. And then I'm drawing the intro screen. And let me show the intro screen. So intro screen is like what we had before. So we have the logo, we have like the, um, not the button, but the information to press the key to start the game. And I added this list of uh, score ranking. So basically let me show you how I'm creating this, this part right here. So, oh yeah, this is the score ranking and you can see that I no longer have the, um, this, this text here, I'm not drawing it here. And that's because I had to create a new scene behavior, which I called load scene, con load scene control. And this is because on the intro scene and on the end scene, you can see that I'm using exactly the same. So I'm using a text, a label of text that says press some key to do something. And when the key is pressed, I'm loading a scene after it. So I created just a control for this. And I added this control to both the intro and the end scene because otherwise I would need to replicate uh, the code that I was using here also on the end uh, scene. So, and basically the load scene control, you can see that what it's doing is when created is starting that loop that we had before to create the, the, the blinking effect of that label. Here is drawing the label. Oh, and now I see why it's not working as I expected because I created two, several attributes actually. You can see it here on the behaviors. Uh, not the main, on the intro, on the behaviors. You can see loads in control and you can customize all this. So you can customize the label. So you can customize what we want to write on that uh, control. You can choose which scene you want to load. Because for example, the intro scene will load the main, uh, the main scene, but the end scene will load the intro again. So we can customize here what scene to load. And we can also customize what control to press. So you can see the intro has this. And if I go to the end scene, to the behaviors, 
we have press enter to continue and here we have press enter to start here we are scene to load is the intro and the enter is the same for both and so here but it is not working and now i see why because i'm not using the attributes <laughs> so this was a mistake so let me see attributes i just need to change this label here and this label here and this is it and on the keyboard choose attribute control and now i'm using the control which is uh, enter and you can see that switch to scene to load and scene to load is also an attribute which is the one that we are configuring here and so i'm reusing this load scene control in both the intro and the end it's just to show you that that's why i don't have the code to draw the um, that blinking text uh, anymore here so i start by setting the current font to um, to yellow and remember that we are drawing this this piece of uh, ui right now so first i set the current one to yellow i draw the text to score ranking so this title right here i'm doing what i did before with uh, the blinking text to just center the the label on screen and i realized that i was doing uh, i was not uh, doing it the best way on the other one you can see that i was put inputting the the size of the screen uh, by hand like half the size of the screen so it's 448 it will be 224 and the, be the, the best way to do it is not to input the size of the screen but just use the variable screen width divided by two because if later we change our screen size it will adapt uh, accordingly and so i'm drawing the test score ranking then i'm setting the current font to retro gaming so that we can have the white text to draw this one here and then we have all this code <laughs> and this is a little bit too much but uh, it's i think it's easier easy to understand so basically what i'm doing is that i'm repeating the number of items in i score so we have five items in i score and i'm repeating uh, through each one of those items and then i created a new attribute called label and what i'm doing is that all this is just one label so i'm creating a text i'm creating like a, a a single variable which is a, a label with all this text with one space the initial space the score space and the points and then i'm just uh, updating the values the one value the two and the the initials and the score according to the data that we have on the i scores list and on the users list so let me show you what i'm doing here is that i'm setting the label so i'm constantly updating the label and adding the different parts of that entire label that we are trying to create so for example i start by setting the label to the current loop count plus one and this sets the label to this one two three four because the current loop count starts at zero so it's always the current loop count plus one so it's it right now on that block i have this piece of the label then i'm setting the label and I'm always updating the label. I didn't have a way to just join new text to the label. So what I'm doing is I'm always updating the entire value of the label. And inside of the set label, I'm just joining the actual value of the label with something else. So what I'm doing here is that, so the label right now, let's, let's um, consider the first iteration. Current loop is zero. So the label right now is zero plus one. So the label right now has a text one. And next, I set label to one and space. So I'm doing this. Now the label has this text. And then I'm doing the label and I'm getting the item from the user, from the current loop count, which means that I'm getting, I'm getting the item zero from the user's list. So, and the label results in this. And then I just keep doing uh, this to everything else. So you can see that I had two spaces. So here we have two spaces. I have one, no, we have one, two, two spaces. Then I'm getting the item from the high score list, just like what I did with the user. I'm getting the corresponding high score. And here I'm calling a, a block that I added here. And this is because we are storing the, the number. The high score is an actual number. So score is 10, is 20, is 30, 100, whatever. But when we want to show, we want to show always the score with five digits. So I created a custom block that uh, accepts the score value as a number. And that's exactly what we were doing with the, to show the score on the, the game screen. So I'm setting the score label to score as text. And then if uh, the score label has less, less than five characters, I'm, I'm just adding like reading zeros to the, to the text. 
And in this case, this block returns a score label, which is cool because I can just call it here. And you can see I get the item current loop count from high score. So I'm getting the value, the item zero from high score. I'm passing that uh, num numeric value to the block. And I'm getting that value as text. And then I use that text to join to the label. And so right now I have my label with this. And then I add another space and I add this text. And yes, so I add label and space and label and the text. And only at the end of this, of all this, is when I have this entire label. And only then I draw the label on the screen. And that's what I'm doing here. And this is exactly the same code that we were using before. So the first one, the X position, is to center the label on screen. And the Y position, you can see that I start at 346, which is the initial value of this one, I believe, yeah, 346. It's where the list starts. And then plus the item of each list, the item of each item, and plus four, I think. Yeah, plus four, which is like an offset between the items. And this is it. <laughs> So basically, I'm loading the data, the high score data and the user's data, and then I'm taking, the, I'm iterating through those lists and just recreating this all this um, label of text and drawing them on the screen. And the intro screen, this is what it does. So we can press the key to start to the main screen, and we get the data from our save files and just show the data on screen. And so this is the intro screen. Now, we go to the game, so we are on the intro screen, we press a key, we play the game until we lose all the life, and when we lose all the life, we'll go to the end screen. And I had to change the game manager here. I don't know if you remember, but I had, had a comment before to say that uh, that uh, said like game over. And now I, I removed that comment, and that comment was that frog loses. Frog loses. Yeah, frog loses. The comment was inside here. So we kill the frog, we decrement one life, and when the player has no remaining life, so when the remaining life is equal to zero, I had a comment here, and basically I just switched that comment uh, by this other block that switches to a different scene. And I don't remember if I told you where I got this, but this is from the... I never know where it is here. Scenes game flow. This is where you get the blocks to switch from one scene to the other. And so, when the player has no more remaining life, I just switch to the end scene. And uh, this is an important thing because the idea here is that if the player has um, a high score, so if the player has a score that will enter on these five um, top uh, scores, then we get this screen and we let the player put the initials and then go back to the beginning. But if the player does not have a nice score, what's going to happen is that we are going to load this end scene, we are going to check if the player has a nice score or not, and if it, it does not have a nice score, then we just load the intro scene, so the player won't be able to see the end, the end screen. And so we load the end scene, and let me show you, okay, here, it's the end scene, and on, on the events, so I added a created, when created, and here is what I, I was telling you. So what I'm doing here is that I'm going through all the high scores. So when we go to the end scene, we, have, we still have the list of high scores, and now we have the score that the player has achieved during the game. What, what I'm doing here is that I'm going to iterate through the list of high scores, and I'm going to see if the score that the player has uh, ha had is greater than any of the values that I already have on the list. And if it's greater, then that value will enter the list and push all the other ones uh, down. And that's what I'm doing right here. So uh, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to repeat by the number of items in I score. So I'm going to go to each one of the values, starting from the beginning. And if the score value of the player is greater than uh, an, the item of the high score list, it means that then that score should enter the list and the last one on the list should go out. And that's what I'm doing here. So basically what I'm doing here, and here I created a new attribute that I called new high score index. And this is because I'm gonna need this attribute. So I, I need to know which item on the list I'm updating because when I'm showing 
this to the player, I need to know which one of the items, which one of the items of the list am I updating the, the user initial. So I need to know if it's the first player I'm updating, the second or the third, or fourth or five, or fifth. So I'm using this, so I'm just setting this value, the new score high in new high score index to the current loop count. And then I'm updating the lists. So what I'm doing to update the list is that I'm inserting the score value on the index that I want. So let's say, for example, that the player, the score of the player makes the player to be on the, on the second place. So what I'm doing here is that I'm going to insert the score at index one of high score, which is the, the second item. And then, which means that now the high score list will have six items because I just inserted one item on the second position, which means that the, the item that was on the second position became the third and everything else I just moved uh, to the bottom. And what I'm doing is that because I want the list to still keep only five items, I rem I'm removing the last item of the list. So I insert a new item in the middle of the list and I remove the last one. And this is the way that I'm updating the list with uh, the new value. So I'm removing the item and you can see to remove the last item of the list is always the number of items in high score minus one. And I do exactly the same for the user. So I'm inserting a default uh, initial because I'm going to let the player uh, change the initials afterwards. So I'm inserting the default initials and removing the last item. So I do all this and then I save the game. So I save this data automatically. I mean, I'm not waiting for the player to enter the initials or to go back to the um, to the intro screen to save this. So if the player achieves a high score, even if he doesn't change the initials, I'm already saving it to the high score list. And I'm exiting the loop. So as soon as I find the value that uh, the value that I'm replacing, I'm can, I, I don't need to continue iterating to the rest of the block because if the player is on the second place, for example, I don't need to check if the player is on the third and on the fourth and on the, on the fifth, he's already on the second. So I can just exit the loop, meaning that I'm just exiting this whole repeat block. And then afterwards, after all this, what I'm doing here is that the new uh, high score index has the default value of minus one. Because if I don't find any value here, I'm meaning that if the score that the player achieves is not greater than any of the scores on the high score, it means that the new high score index is going to keep the value minus one. And so if we end this whole block and the new high score index is equal to minus one, it means that the player didn't make the five top uh, high score values. And then we switch back to the intro. So I'm not going to show the end screen and let the player change the initials. I'm just going to go back to the initial screen uh, right ahead. But this only happens when the player did not achieve the top five uh, places. But if the player actually achieved one of those places, then we, we, we stay in the end scene and the drawing starts and we start drawing the screen. And drawing the screen is quite similar to this one. So the first thing that we are doing is drawing the text new high score, which is exactly the same as this one. And then I'm doing the same that I did for the high score list to draw one of these lines, but in this case I don't have a four uh, loop because I don't I don't have a loop because I don't need it. I'm, I'm just like drawing one. So I'm setting the variable to the new high score index plus one, uh, the space, the user initials. This is another attribute that I created. So this is an attribute that I need to update the user initials so that the player, when the player is pressing the keys, I can just like keep updating this label and showing the correct user initial that is being selected. And you can see that the default value is AAA, which is going to appear here. And space space gets score as text. Here I had to duplicate this block from the, the intro screen. I could not use that block from the intro screen, but it's doing exactly the same. I didn't find a way to have like just one block with this code and I could call it from wherever I want. So I had to duplicate this block, which is not a very good practice, but uh, I didn't find any other way to do it. But basically it works exactly the same as the intro. And space, blah, blah, blah. And here, okay, draw text label, which is the same. So I'm drawing uh, here this in the, in the middle of the screen. And then I set the current font to red and to write this, enter your initials. And now as soon as we have this, 
the player is going to have a new high score. I'm going to say, okay, you have a new high score. You are on, let's say, the third place. The user initial is going to be AAA, which is the default one. This is going to have the score that the player achieved. And now, since we have here enter your initials, what I'm doing is that I added an event when any key is pressed. And because I want to, um, I want to capture all the keys that the player presses. And when the player is pressing the keys, I'm just um, replacing the, the initials in the user initial variable. So what I'm doing here is that, let me see, yeah. So first, you can see that this uh, event gives me the key code and the character. Ba basically, the character is the text value or the number value of the key that was pressed. And the key code is a key code of special keys, like the, you can use it to detect if the player is pressing the space bar or the enter or the control key, stuff like that. But I don't want to worry about control keys. I only want the character. So first I see if the character key is not empty, meaning that the, the player actually pressed a character and not a special key, then I'm updating this is the code to update the initials. And what I'm doing here is that I create a, an index value, uh, variable that I called user initial index. And this user initial index starts at zero. And what I'm using uh, this user initial index is that it starts at zero. And this indicates basically what, what letter of the, um, the user initials that I'm updating. So let me just show you here. So it starts at zero. And when it starts at zero, it means that when the player presses one key, I'm going to update the, the first letter of the user initials. And as soon as the, press, as the player presses the key and I update this letter, then I increment the user initial index to one. So the next key that he presses is going to update the second character. I increment again. So the next key updates the last character. And when it reaches the last character, I just come I just reset the value of the index to zero. So if the player keeps pressing the keys, he's updating one character at a time and coming back to the beginning and always updating um, the character. And that's what I'm doing here. So if the user initial index is e equals to zero, then I'm setting the user initials, the, which is the variable where I'm storing the three initials of the user, to the character that it just pressed and the second character of the, the variable user initials and the third character of the variable. But if the user initial index is one, meaning that if we are updating the letter in the middle, then I'm using the first character plus the character that is just ended plus entered plus the last character of the user initial. And otherwise, I mean, if the user initial index is equal to two or greater than one, I'm setting the character that is just uh, pressed to the last character and using the other ones as they are. So this updates the user initial with uh, what the key, what the user is pressing. Then after I do, not here, after I do all this, I set the user initial to uppercase. So it doesn't matter if the user is pressing the um, with caps lock or not, or with the shift key pressed, because all the letters that he is, uh, is going to insert, I'm always uh, converting them to uppercase. And then after this, I'm replacing the item new score index. Yes, and then I'm replacing the item or inside the, the user list that we have on our game attribute, I'm just replacing the item with the new user initials. So remember that I told you that we have this new I score index, and this is when I find uh, which user I'm updating. So I save that value to here, and then I can use that value here to, to update the user initials on the list. So I know that I'm updating, for example, the user number one on the user number two with the new user initials. And each time we are doing this, I'm just saving constantly for and updating the game attributes on the disk. And probably I shouldn't be doing this every time the user is pressing, probably just when the user um, goes out of the screen. But then if the user like closes the game in the middle, I'm not, uh, if I, I'm not doing this, I'm, I won't save the data. So I'm just constantly saving. Doesn't seem to, to be like a, a very heavy operation. So it's, I, I don't think there is a problem with this. And at the end of all this, I'm incrementing the user in, initial index so that I keep 
Okay, I keep um, iterating through the, the several characters. So I start on character number one, I press a key, I go to character number two, number three, no, I mean number zero, number one, number two. So I increment, but if the user initial index is equal to three, meaning like we have three characters, so the indexes are zero, one, and two, when, the, when I increment again and I'm outside of the, the range of characters, I just reset the value back to zero. So if I keep, keep pressing, I'm just changing the keys one after the other and uh, going back to the beginning. And, and this is it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm trying to remember if I'm missing anything, but this is it. So we start the game. We load the save data that we have uh, on the disk. So we load the high score list and the initials of the players. We show them in the intro screen. We play the game. We save the data on the on the score on the score game attribute so that we can access the score on the end screen. And on the end screen, we see okay, does the player achieve the high score or not? And if the player achieved the high score, then I'm going to add him uh, update his initial so he, to enter in the table. And if he, he does not achieve the high score, he's going back to the beginning. And this is it. And throughout all this, I'm saving the data. So when I do this save game, is that so these, uh, the values on the game attributes persist um, throughout different gameplay sessions. And this is it. Um, I think I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, what's in control, I talk about this, game manager using the score. Yes, this is it, so let me see. Actually, I didn't, now that I'm thinking, I didn't test if the player uh, does not enter the high score uh, table, if it goes immediately to the intro screen or not, but I'm gonna test it right now <laughs> and we'll see. So you can see that the lowest score we have is like 80. So I got need to do like, just, okay, 30 is enough. I die and I die again. Okay, I have 30, so whatever. Now I have 30. Now let's suppose I have 10. So this score won't enter in the five top scores. Yes, and it, load, it loaded the end scene. It did, okay, we are not in the top uh, in the table. So go back to the beginning. And you can see that I didn't have the option to insert the data here. And yeah, this is it. <laughs> um, I think I'm not missing anything. Oh, yes, I'm now that I think about it, I'm missing here. I should add here the high score with the value. So I'm gonna do that probably in the next video. But it's basically repeating what's here and using the high score, the top one high score here on the on the top. At least that's what I had here on the Yeah, on the way out. On the original game, you see that we have that here and and here. So yes. And um, yeah, I forgot to mention, but this is not on the original game, does not have these screens. I mean, this is from the original game, I think. Uh, the screenshots, you can see that it's similar, but it's quite different because the whole, when the game starts, it's a whole thing with animations and slot coming uh, to, to the screen and the whole thing. Then you have like these instructions. I'm not doing any, any of this. I'm just doing like the intro and the end. It is enough to understand how to load different scenes, how to keep data between scenes. I think that's the most important thing here is to how to use game attributes and how to persist data between um, gameplay sessions. And yeah, so <laughs> this is it. This is probably a little bit longer yeah, than I expected, almost 40 minutes. <laughs> so this would be really difficult to keep under 20. So <laughs> the next one, I'll probably try to keep it again under 20 minutes.